Today I'm going to talk about one of Carvino's novel, Mr. Paloma. How to make oneself a dark precursor, Mr. Paloma's practice, death, and literary epiphanies. What role can a storyteller play in the expression of the world? Surely the world expresses itself or things find their own expressions. However, a storyteller still seems to play a very special role in letting the world express itself if not giving the world expressions. As the storyteller experiences the world, or more precisely, is affected or flowed by, flow through by the world, he makes sense of it. He's not only one of the things that are passively received and perceived by other things in the world, so he's strictly passive in kind of this sense, but he's also a very special, a very singular point in a Deleuzean sense, a point where things in the world make sense, a point where things give rise to epiphanies or epiphanies happen between things, where the beauty of things suddenly appears in its most vibrant form and movement, a point where the patterns of things emerge without being abstract, a point where things exist or become, if not to be essentialist, in such a way that is true to both things themselves and their patterns, what I'm saying here is that a storyteller may let the world or let the things express their particularity and their universality, express things themselves and their patterns at the same time. A storyteller who plays an important role in this resonance between things and their patterns can be explored as the dark precursor in a Deleuzean sense. Deleuze observes the special role of a dark precursor as in this quote, thunderbolts explore between different intensities, but they are preceded by invisible and invisible, imperceptible dark precursor, which determines their path in advance. The resonance between two heterogeneous series is preceded by a dark precursor. Something emerges out of this resonance, out of this difference in intensity, but very interestingly, something can happen only because the dark precursor exists. As in the example, thunderbolts appear out of darkness only because of this invisible and imperceptible dark precursor. This dark precursor does not emerge or it remains invisible. It is different from what happens. It's different from the thunderbolts, but it makes what happens happen. But it makes what appear appear. So the rule of the dark precursor is crucial and nuanced. It creates without creating any substance. It creates the creation itself. I think the storyteller plays the role of the dark precursor when it comes to the creation of sense and the emergence of things and their patterns. A storyteller does not care, does not create things or their appearances, but he creates the creation of things making them emerge in their fullest and most beautiful forms and movements. Of course, here I'm referring to a more philosophical storyteller or literary philosophies as term, a term coined by a collection of papers talking about Borges, Calvino, and Echo, Roberto Echo. The figure here I have in mind is Mr. Paloma, the character in Calvino's novel, Mr. Paloma. He reflects Calvino himself, he reflects Calvino as the storyteller, or at least the storyteller or the conceptual persona Calvino has in mind. This novel is a collection of Mr. Paloma's experiences. The chapters are titled by trivial daily events like Paloma on the beach, Paloma looks at the sky, Paloma does the shopping, Paloma's journeys, the meditations of Paloma. These fragments of usual experiences is number, are numbered by three conscious practices of Calvino. The first one is description, the second one is stories, and the third med meditation, meditations. Now, all the chapters are numbered by one to three numbers, one to three out of them. So, and there is even a preface by Calvino explaining how this number marks the chapters. And so this is a very conscious cho choice and conscious practice of Calvino. He wants to utilize these three practices to 
describe or, and, or to tell stories or meditate through carving, through Mr. Paloma. Thus, in this account of daily experiences, Paloma, the storyteller, makes the things he encounters or happen in him vibrate with both their particular details, that is by descriptions, or by their patterns, that is rep rep repetitively taught in the stories. While his descriptions affirm the details thing, he also tells stories that reveal the patterns of things. While these two different practices coexist and relate to each other in his in Paloma's experiences, he maintains such a very strange, meditative and empty position that make epiphanies happen in the resonance of these two different practice, description and stories. So I put meditation as what mediates between these two, how to make these two resonate. In my paper, I want to explore how such a storyteller, Mr. Paloma, gets epiphanies when the two different literary practices, that is, description and stories, meet. Through this exploration, I'm discussing the question of how the storyteller makes things expressed. There are two distinct aspects of particular details and universal patterns. Since the dialogue between these two, through the rule of storyteller, or in the process of storytelling, is a major and is a very constant thing in Calvino's project, I will discuss both Invisible Cities and Mr. Paloma to give a fuller picture of this. I will first discuss the special rule, the special states of the dark precursor, that is, uh, that is the storyteller in Invisible Cities or the storyteller in Mr. Paloma. And I will see how the silence dialogue in Invisible Cities and the practice death in Mr. Paloma make a dark precursor that allow and enable the resonance between different series. And the second part of my presentation will show how the resonance precedes and gives rise to epiphanies. Why? To become a dark precursor from silence dialogue to practice death. What is the state of a dark precursor that can create creation? How should it be? What is the state itself? Here's an inter interesting description of Jodot about dark precursor. The invisible precursor conceals itself and its functioning. This is a very strange practice of the dark precursor or of someone who wants to become a dark precursor. It conceals itself and its functioning, so it has to make series resonate and to create creation. This means that the primary and the most important practice of the dark precursor is a practice on itself, a reflexive practice. To make oneself a dark precursor, one has to, first of all, make himself invisible. To function as a dark precursor, one has to conceal the function. What does this mean? This means that re creation requires such an invisible entity such a hidden and ambiguous state of the dark precursor in order to be created. Interestingly, when Calvino tries to make the most profound and beautiful creation emerge, he always starts with this self-reflexive practice. He makes the most crucial point invisible, silence, suspended, death, and replaced from its place. This kind of design is manifest in both Invisible Cities and Mr. Paloma. So I will start with Invisible Cities. Invisible Cities consist of different stories of individual cities, and the stories of different cities are framed by a dialogue between Kublai Khan, the listener, who invites the Marco Polo to, to tell the stories. So it's a, it's a, a dialogue between two interlocutors. One is the emperor, one is the traveling storyteller. And as the landscape of the cities unfold, the very form and state of the two interlocutors' dialogue goes through several changes. In the beginning, since Polo, the foreigner, cannot speak the emperor's language, the two characters communicate through objects and gestures that imitate or try to express the things and events in Polo's stories. The 
This interesting form of communication indicates that, from the very beginning of the process of storytelling, language itself is challenged and even suspended. Calvino puts as much effort into story, stories themselves as into the form of storytelling or the creation of this process of storytelling. And after Polo masters the language, they communicate in language, but they are dissatisfied. They find language inadequate. So they turn to objects and gestures once again, but with less movement and more inner significances. Finally, they fall into silence. The description near the end or in the, from the middle of the novel is very interesting. The two of them just sit there and in front of each other and remain silent, while the stories keep emerging in their most vibrant shapes and colors. In other words, if the suspension of the language in the beginning of the novel is involuntary because one of them cannot speak the language, this second suspension of language is clearly an active and conscious choice. In order to let the stories express themselves, the two interlocutors have to abandon language. They have to practice silence. They have to be replaced from their own languages. This is what Deleuze means when he says that a dark person needs to conceal itself and its functioning. A storyteller has to conceal its language in order to let stories happen. He has to maintain invisible in order for the new, the creative, the lively to happen in the already territorialized world. In order to precede creation, it has to be invisible, hidden, and undetermined. And a similar practice can be found in Mr. Paloma, when Paloma decides to experience the world while pretending to be dead. He tries to see the world and to imagine time without him. He is soon overwhelmed by the vastness of the cosmos and the endless time. He tries to figure out a way to exist while not existing, to experience while acknowledging the overwhelming infinity. His intriguing conclusion in the, at the end, end of the novel is that if time has to end, it can be described instant by instant, Paloma thinks. And each instant, when described, explains so that its end can no longer be seen. He decides that he will set himself to describing every instant of his life. And until he has described them all, he will no longer think of being dead. At that moment, he dies. This is the end of the novel. It is not only a conclusion, but also a starting point. It's very interesting that Calvino chose to make a conclusion a starting point or a vantage point to see the whole novel. This, this is the stage what, that Paloma strives for and finally reaches. Pretending to be dead, that is practicing being dead as an apprentice, leads to the acknowledgement of the vastness of the cosmos. The question then is how to make things happen in this vastness? How is creation possible? Or how is experience possible? How is description possible in such a world like this? And the ideal state Paloma finds is to be dead and to describe, both at the same time, be dead and describe. To say, describe things as if he is dead. And by describing things, he is dead. He is dead in the sense that he maintains a state in which he cannot only maintain invisible but also creative. A state in which he can express the creativity of the cosmos by being invisible himself. He becomes the dark precursor by being dead, by practicing being invisible, and thus let the cosmos be created in every instance of his ambiguous existence. He recreates time at every instance by being absent in time in a very creative way. Two, resonance between two series literally epiphanies between particularity and universality. While the dark precursor, either that is the storyteller in Invisible City or the storyteller in Mr. Paloma accomplished by concealing itself is a resonance between series. As the list puts it, what takes place in the system between resonating series under the influence of a dark precursor is called epiphany. The cosmic extension coincides with the amplitude of a force movement, which sweeps aside and overruns the series. 
As the dark precursor makes true serious resonance, epiphanies happen. The cosmos moves in such a movement that two series are overturned in one cosmic movement. The effect of the dark precursor is so huge, it forces the two set series to move in such a cosmic movement. What is this movement like? What is resonance like? I'm going to give some examples from Calvino for, of such mom, moments of epiphany. In invisible cities, epiphany pervades the temporality. It is not just one moment or another, but the whole continuum time of the emergence of stories or the time of storytelling. In Invisible, C Invisible City, the novel structures with this binary of the two interlocutors, Kublai Khan and Marco Polo. While one con is concerned with monist or total totalitarian, total totalizing view of the emperor, empire, the other stands for pluralism. And they are, these two views are reflected by the structure of the novel, that is the framing dialogue or the individual stories that cannot be totalized in any way. And they, are ref they reflect Calvino's struggle or exploration of pattern and details. And storytelling is something that mediates them or involves the binaries and recreates them. How do you create such a time of storytelling when the two characters with their two views constantly interact and participate in each other. Such a time constantly gives rise to epiphanies that are stories that show their most beautiful and col colors and forms. In such epiphanies, monism and pluralism are aspects of each other. They are created by such a special temporality. In Mr. Paloma, such epiphanies happen in moments when Paloma himself acts as the point where the particular details and the universal patterns or the abstract sto more abstract stories encounter. In one of the movement, moments when he goes to see the stars with the chart, he finds that trust is necessary. It is a necessary condition to look at the stars with an astronomical chart without which he will not know what he's looking at. And it seems that it's necessary for him to bring some pre-existing knowledge or some stories, some names he knows of in order to see the stars. However, stories or the, or the names of stars are created not, not, as, not by, their, by the pre-existing stories, but by the encounters between Mr. Paloma and the stories. In the second quote, in identifying a constellation, the decisive proof is to see how it answers when you call it. More convincing than the matching of distances and configurations with those marked on the chart is the reply that the luminous dot gives to the name by which it has been called. Its promptness in responding to that thought, becoming one with it. What is important is the call and the response. It's the name that signifies the emergence of things in that encounter. When things get names, they shine in a relation with others. The resonance between the particular existence and the stories they are given, or they are, they remind people of, of their tales by themselves. They become nothing but the resonance, the sound, the name. In such moments, Paloma experiences the name of things by seeing or describing them and telling stories of them at the same time. This entry in the novel ends with a very intriguing note on Paloma himself that may shed some light on the state of dark precursor. Why is such a person, such a dark precursor, acting as a point where stories and description encounter? His movements between seeing the sky and reading a map is like convulsions. Like in the last quote, he looks, looks around a few paces from him. <coughs> a little crowd has got gathered, observing his movements like the convulsions of a madman. So he has to make himself disabled and awkward in order to make things resonate and recreate it. Here's the last uh, episode of Mr. Paloma that I want to end this presentation with. Well, this episode is about Paloma swimming in the sea at sunset. And the description, the entry in this novel is very interesting. <coughs> 
because it kind of resolves or it interacts with this binary of the universality and particularity. Firstly, the overwhelming sunlight on the sea seems to present universality. When sun begins to go down, this reflection takes form on the sea. From the horizon all the way to the shore, a dazzling patch exists. It composed of countless waving glints. Between one glint and the next, the opaque blue of the sea makes a network, blue ne dark network. All the particular existence on the surface of sea are situated as parts of the network of sea and sun without particularity. Universality is infinite and very, every detail is all engulfed in it. However, the universality leads to an interesting view of particularity. Every breath swimming westwards at the, this hour sees the strip of light aimed at him, which then dies out just a bit beyond the spot where his own extends. Each has his own reflection, which has the direction only for him and moves with him. In such an infinite network of the sea and the sun, what one can experience is the particularity of each point, and what the infinite and the universal make one feel is the particularity in it. Or, to some people, acting as a dark precursor, with what a particular point shows is the universality in it. So universality is folded into particular, and the particular is engulfed in the universality. The common and the inclusive it resonates with each other in this situation of swimming. Paloma, the bodily subject, the dark precursor, experiences this white sea as a particular existence. In him, the universal and the particular, the infinite and the finite, resonate and interact with each other without being contradictory. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Are there any questions you would like to ask? If not, I uh, would be interested, you were telling us now in this context of, uh, let's say, a very um, consistent cultural sphere, but in your biography I read that you work on the relationships between Deleuze and East Asian thought as well. So I, I suppose that's a totally different story, isn't it? Yes. And is it possible to apply Deleuzean concepts as, as uh, directly to East Asian thought as you did now to Itala Canvilo's novel? There's a very interesting resonance between Deleuze and Eastern Asian thought, especially the notion of dark precursor in like in Buddhism or in a lot of ancient Chinese thought, this is this kind of practice of being suspended from oneself to be invisible or to make oneself as if dead in order to create. So this is very a very interesting connection here. So there's even a connection uh, from Buddhism to this novel and to the Yes, the and it's meditation as Kavina himself calls it. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yeah. What is dark precursor? <laughs> it is like into this concept, there is, it is something that precedes creation, that makes two serious resonance. It's something that is invisible, but makes what visible happen. Thank you again thank for your you. presentation.